Hello and welcome to another of my comedy interviews for my blog, A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and I've seen to date over 750 and counting comedians over the last 45 years and my blog documents every experience that I've had with them. Uh, I'm delighted today to have as my very special guest one of my favourite comedians. It's only Mr. Hal Cruttenden. Yes! Thank you. Thank you. Hello! Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> How are you? I'm I'm very well. Thank, I'm very well. Thank you I'm, so uh, so much for being my guest. I'm I'm absolutely delighted. No problem. I actually, I didn't know I was going to be being videoed. So this is my non-work clothes, the Saracen's rugby shirt, and I'm in my wife's office. So I'm not this, it looks artistic, doesn't it? She's an artist. But not. So Brilliant. I'm, I'm a, feeling a little bit self-conscious, but also, yeah, I just, I think this is actually a better, this looks good. But yes, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Yes. Great. Well, it does I'm... feel weird because not, no day seems normal anymore, does it? No, it's, it's weird times, weird times. Yeah. But I am genuinely delighted that you're here. And today, we're going to talk about your comedy career. So it's all about you. And we're going to go right back to the start. And um, please, can you tell me what inspired you to be a comedian in the first place? Um, do you know, it's always a weird story because I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind till I was 26. <laughs> it, I mean, I was... I had I had been an actor for well basically a couple of years. I, I did some child acting. I went to drama school after university. I was a student for years. I was messing about. I was struggling as an actor, right. and I had been to the comedy store. And I'd always looked at comedy and gone, oh, I "Could never do that. That's horrendous." And um, and a friend of mine who um, who I was work I was uh, I wasn't doing that much acting work. So uh, a friend of mine who I was working with at doing BBC Traffic and Travel Brilliant. was doing a stand-up comedy workshop and he said to me you could do stand-up you know and I'm going oh no no I couldn't and he said you should do I'm doing this course and uh, and you should think about doing it wow. and and so I joined that course and I but I still remember when he said it I went there was a moment where I went Yes, actually, that is. This, I was sort of thinking I'll do this course because I want to write one-man shows that are all very theatrical. Like, do you remember John Sessions used to do these yeah, things? Yeah, it was actually yeah. the biggest, Sadly big, missed, big yeah. influence on me. Yeah, Travelling Tales or something, yeah. and Life of Napoleon. And I'd seen these and thought, that's exactly what I want to do. And then I thought, oh, I'll do this stand-up course because that'd be, you know, it was at that time in, I was not getting much acting work. I was doing bits and bobs. But as soon as I started doing this stand-up comedy course which the woman who runs it jill edwards still runs one in brighton i think um and it just gets you interested and in you start you start watching a lot more stand-up and you start i mean the people people that inspired me in the 90s this is about 96 97 the people who inspired me was watching old videos of eddie izzard bill right. hicks those you know and when i saw eddie is actually eddie izzard is probably the single person who made me go oh i can do that because i thought if a man can be that camp that middle class, I can do it. If, 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 because I always thought stand up was a bit for the tough boys, you know, and I saw ideas, I went, no, it's not. And what was lovely about him, which I certainly took years to ever achieve, was that thing that he doesn't apologize for himself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He just came out and went, Whoa. So um, I would say it's a combination of watching Eddie Izzard yeah. and this friend of mine, Dave Klein, who, wow. who did, who was doing a stand up comedy workshop. And all of these, there was lots of people in that workshop who just didn't continue doing it. Right. And there were, there were, I mean, people who've done that, that same workshop, it used to be at the City Lit, and then she, she ran it separately because there were other, other places. People like Jimmy Carr did it. Yeah. Um, Simon Evans did yeah, it. Yeah, he was one of the people. Yeah, yeah. But there's only Addy Borg. Have you seen Addy yeah, Van der Borg? Uh, Very good. Yeah, yeah. He did it. But, but, but they wanted to say, my year, no one else continued. They did it for a bit, some of them. But, it's it's that thing of whether it, I still felt I remember walking down from this job at um that I was doing at the BBC doing traffic reports and I walked down to sign on to this course at the City Lit in London and I remember going I remember thinking at the time I think this is important this could yeah. be the thing because I'd always felt as a bit of an actor but then I also thought this is like you know it's I was always scared of writing my own stuff and I suddenly went with comedy there's no there's no rules. It doesn't matter that your that your 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 writing might be rubbish. It's exactly. if you're funny. That's all yeah. that matters. Is if you're funny. Yeah. You don't have to be, you know, artistically superb. So um, 
So yes, sorry, that was you'll find this with me. Getting through questions is very difficult because I go on for half an hour <laughs> on each talk question. Away. It's great. <laughs> um, how was your first ever gig then after your city lit course? Did I was um well my first gig well was through these guys. So there was a group of these guys, oh, I still remember David Klein, who I think teaches stuff now and yeah. does do still write scripts. This other guy, Tony Elvin, um and I can't remember. Oh, Nick. I'm still friends with one of them. Um, thingy. Um, um, God, Nick. Nick Ford. Nick Ford. He is the guy <laughs> most likely to watch this, Rich. And I've just forgotten his surname. <laughs> Nick Ford. Anyway, it was, it's so, always the way, so it's a group. They, 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 I mean, I saw him. I saw him about two years ago. But there was a group of these guys, and they they'd done the comedy course and, was, and were really into stand up. Right. And they st they they ran a club in Notting Hill called the crock of wit right. <laughs> and it was it Red was the Italian <laughs> restaurant and it was a tiny little room yeah and we even got people you know i first saw rob bryden in that room oh, and things he was, he was yeah. impressions and stuff um and i did my first gig there and wow. uh, do, you, do you know what that first it, it still is absolutely one of the most amazing experiences I had was the first time the first time you stand in front of a crowd and you've watched lots of stand up and you know you've got your stuff, your jokes, and you get laughs from strangers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it, I, I assume I've never done heroin, but I assume it's <laughs> like heroin. Basically, the first hit, I think somebody said that to me. I think the first hit actually of heroin might be yeah. terrible sometimes. It makes people sick. <laughs> but but it's like several drugs where the first hit is yeah. is so amazing and then you spend the rest of your life trying to chase it yeah. the same hit. and i think the same with comedy i think i don't think anything's ever been as exciting as that first moment when strangers laughed at me and it was it was 25 people in a room yeah, you know, yeah, it was my yeah. sisters i think and my mum all sitting in a row as well watching um it's but, amazing uh, because it, um whenever i sit and watch a comedy show hmm. um the comedian has to walk out and they've got literally one minute if that <laughs> to get the audience otherwise exactly. you know you don't you don't know what you're going to get but if you're endearing if you're very likable if you've got a a great one-liner you're away and uh, you're very much like that you're so um wanting us to listen more to you well, what you have to say uh -huh. because you're so um, I love the fact your frankness. I love the fact you can say whatever you like, and, and, and it's it's wonderful to watch. It really is. Oh, thank you, Rich. Um, that's very that's very nice of you. I must admit, on my first gig, I'm not sure. It, those are a lot of skills you you learn. It was a very nice crowd. It's all experience, uh, isn't it? And it I was, think it's you have to have difficult um, nights, should we say, to gain the yeah. experience. You, you you need to have the rough nights to become a better comic. I think. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly, no, totally. Um, what has been your best and worst gig to date? Um, best gig apart from my first gig, yeah. which did go well and was amazing. My bet, the actual gig that was the most exciting thing I've ever done and blew my mind. And it wasn't the biggest gig, I, it was still a big gig. It was the first time I did live at the Apollo. Wow. And even though I've done the O2 where you do Channel 4 Comedy Gala and it's 16,000 people or whatever, live at the Apollo first time, because I've done it, I've done it three times. Yeah. And I've I hosted it on once. I've one of them in the audience. I've, I've been in the audience for it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it wasn't the first one. Which one was it? Was uh, it well, the slimmest one? The slimmest yeah. version? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the best if one I'm was honest, when I was yes. quite slim. 2012. <laughs> um, that was because, yeah because I, they record two shows don't they one after yeah. another yeah yeah and it do you know what that show because it's so frightening with the big screen that goes up yeah. it's so silly that people go oh and it looks like it <laughs> yeah because it goes you they they you know you you do practice it before you do it at the so during the afternoon and they go look smoke comes in and then the screen's going up and then someone does usually shout go at you or so go and you because you, you say they go don't walk forward too soon and you'll smack your head on the screen yeah. coming up so there's there's all that technical stuff to remember and you can't see anything you walk straight into smoke and you walk out to uh, the apollo and um just hear a wall I, of sound <laughs> yeah and I, I went out to that and i i watched the set again recently and i still think it's one of the best sets I've, yeah. I've i had it wasn't my best dangerous material most cutting i mean i had bits of it, it was nice but it was so perfect that set and i lay in bed that night i think i used to put this i used to 
said this in my last comedy show. I lay in bed that night going, I'm just such a star, I can't sleep. I was, just, I was, I was so excited. I just, I just lay in bed going, well, it's, I'm, I'm just a star. I'm obviously a star. And, um, and You've got to was... beat yourself up, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was really just myself in bed, my wife quietly snoring beside me. And I, went, I just... I just can't sleep. I've just done such a star. Um, it was so perfect. I don't think any gig has ever felt so absolutely That's perfect. Brilliant. Just everything hit exactly the right way, and every and and um, I, I, I said I, I looked at it recently and went, oh, I'm so, I'm so proud of that. So proud. I remember just coming off going, that was that was great. I Good absolutely nailed it. And um, it's still the one that I'm. It's still probably my best live at the Apollo, even though I hosted as well. Hosted yeah. is a bit bit messier because you're messing with the audience stuff. Yeah. And the last one was pretty good, actually. The last Christmas one I did, but I still yeah. I enjoy. Yeah, the first one was just amazing, just amazing. Is there a, is there a worse one? Is there a worse worst? Worst probably. I would say probably the worst thing is the first time you die, right. and that was for me. That was about the eleventh gig. It's a good answer. Yeah. It was the first time I died, which you've so... It's quite a big moment for comics because, I mean, some people who are amazing die on their first one and keep going. I'm not yeah. sure how, would have, how I'd have done if I'd died on my first one. I died at my, my 11th gig or something because I was always quite a good performer. I couldn't get away with it. But suddenly I was on a set. I was doing a set with some quite good people. I think... Um, I think Ricky Grover was on. Oh, really? Yeah, Ricky Grover was on. Big, good comics. Yeah, and, yeah. and it was in a pub in Wood Green. That I'm always pleased about this. It, it, it was a pub and it's now a Tesco's. So it's... <laughs> Um, I love, I love the fact that... Oh, no, I don't. I'm sorry about that pub in Wood Green. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, it's now a Tesco, yeah. so I'm so I'm pleased that it went under. Um, <laughs> and I went on. It was quite a laddie crowd, and someone. Um, I went on, started, and someone went, be funny or something, um, and and uh, really at the beginning or something. And I sort of handled it not very well, but, uh, and I just died. And it was just looking at these faces of people. That, that's what you know is that pe yeah. people think that you don't realise that you're annoying them, but you yeah. know you're annoying them, and you know you're trying to make it work. And, and it's not like you, you know, I, I think the thing is when you die as well, audiences so often just think, oh God, he's always this bad. It, it must always be, how is this? So sort of, if they're, you know, if they're nice people, they're going always having a bad night and they feel sorry for you. But if you're angry at a comic for dying because you think he's rubbish and doesn't know it, you go, no, no, he's having a bad night. You're an idiot if you think he is just rubbish. Because I, I mean, I've never done this, but I would love to one time, because I still, you know, I might die at corporate events or something. Not to say that I'm not very good at corporates, corporate people watching this. Um, <laughs> but corporates are the most dangerous gigs we do now as right. professionals because I would say, you know, if you do a lot, you might die once a year at a corporate. It might be one that just, it just goes wrong and the setup's terrible or whatever. Right. Um, and I've, all, I've never had the guts to do it, but I'd love to just, I'd love to just one time stand in front of an audience and go, I, I know you're probably feeling uncomfortable, but it's always this bad. It's always this terrible. I die. I've been going over 20 years as a comedian. I pay a mortgage. I've brought up a family with the money I make from comedy. And I die like this every single time. <laughs> because... Because when oh, audiences mate. get angry, that, that is sort of what they think. They sort of think, oh, yeah. he's just rubbish. He yeah, just yeah. must be bad. Um, but I still remember that first death. And everybody, else, weirdly, everybody else was storming. Yeah, everybody yeah. else was quite laddy. <laughs> so we're like Ricky Grover types, you know, all quite yeah. butch. And um, and I just, I went off and I went home. I was living with my mum for about six months. I think I just left a relationship and I was trying to get a new and flat place in the flat. So I was with my mum for about six months. And I went in the little spare room at my mum's house, lay in bed going, well, in, it was the first humiliation. And I lay in bed thinking, I'm still alive. I'm still, <laughs> it doesn't actually kill you. You know, why do we call it death? I'm still lying yeah. here going, oh, I'm safe, I'm safe. And, and that's the thing to remember with for comedians, I think. That, um, that's brilliant. That's such a good answer. Um, yeah. Let's go on to touring. I've seen you many times live, many, many yeah. times. I saw your uh, Tough Lovey tour in 2014. Mm. I saw Straight Out of Crutendern in 2016, and I saw Chubster in 2019. Do you enjoy touring, and does the routine change at all from town to town? Um, 
I do love, I really like, I, I love touring. Yeah. I must admit, even though it gets, the travel is always a pain. And there's always, you know, it's the night, because everybody's waiting for you. I've never been so late, it started late or anything. Yeah. There was one time, it, it, it's the worry of if you're driving somewhere and if there's a car accident and they shut the road and you just go, that stresses me. In fact, do you know what? I once drove past quite a serious accident when nobody had got hurt, but there was stuff all over the carriageway and people were all out their cars on their phones. And I thought, and I was and I was right close behind it. So I drove I drove oh, about a minute after this accident just happened. I knew everybody was fine, but I just want to explain my behaviour. There's a guy on his phone trying to call the police and you know ambulance and stuff. And I drove past and thought they're going to shut the road for this. And I've made it through. And I went yes as I drove past. <laughs> And knowing, oh my God, that could have been the end of the gig yeah. because the police will shut this for two I've, or three hours. I because the of... town. <laughs> and, this, and I caught this guy's eye who was on his phone. <laughs> this guy's on his phone going, I've just been in a bad accident. And he saw me going, yes! As I drove <laughs> it felt terrible. Um, but apart from, all, apart from all that, it is such an honour to do your own tour. Yeah. It is, su it is, it's all that I dreamt of as a comedian, I must admit. I mean, I obviously had big dreams. I want to be my, you know, well, I want to be Michael McIntyre, but slightly yeah, more dangerous. Yeah. Um, I want to be controlling yeah. the world. I want to have Saturday evening my own show. Yeah. But when to do a tour where people come to see you and you've got, especially when you've got both, I usually do both halves of the show. Yeah. Sometimes I have a warm up, but sometimes I have um, both halves of the show and they're just there for you and they with you and they often know you. So you don't have to do that, all that introduction that you have to do at a club yeah, where you yeah, feel like yeah. you're still slightly letting people know who you are. Yeah. Um, is just the biggest honour. You can just and, get on with it and, and start yeah. generating the laughs. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, and it's always worrying before, and it's always complete. I mean, it, that is that to me is such happiness. And I, you know, it is sad, but I would love to do a Tommy M Cooper or Eric Morecambe, who, well, uh, or Ian Cognito, and die either on stage wow. or just as I come off, wow. because it is the mo it's just the best thing in life if as a comedian is that. I'm performing, yeah. my crowd, yeah. my, I, I just love touring. Um, in terms of material changing, uh, oh, different places, I would say the biggest change is probably in or outside London, actually. Right. Uh, London, even compared to other big cities, you can guarantee in London, you've got people from everywhere. So you will probably have an Australian, an American, you'll yeah, probably yeah, have yeah. people from all, yeah. so you really, you can be very comfortable. You feel like you're playing the world, I think, when you're in London, yeah. usually. Um, and you usually have, you, you know, the old days before COVID, yeah, we'd yeah, have yeah, lots yeah, of yeah. tourists, or we'd have lots of people from different backgrounds or people who are living here from France or Germany or whatever. So I think that's very different. Whereas you can't, you know, I used, to, I always can make jokes about being somewhere like, I don't know, Lincoln, and yeah, is yeah. anybody from outside the county? <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 you, and, yeah. and you end up being very rude about them all being one family and all those <laughs> sorts of things. Um, so that's the biggest difference. I'd say, I'd say I do, I try and do something local. I try and do something, you know, I don't know, walk on stage in places like Glasgow and go, yeah. it's so lovely. It's, it's yeah. so much nicer than you expect it to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say different countries are different. For me, Belfast, because of more my Northern Irish wife Belfast. stuff, Belfast is always a slightly different gig to everywhere else because I find I do so much on Belfast and I tend to be ruder it's than so I ever am well. outside. I can, the, you can be so the, rude. Yeah, the, imperson place. the impersonation of, I must imagine, your wonderful wife is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's very cruel. It's actually very inaccurate compared to the normal. I, I make her just be so terrifying Northern Irish woman. But, but, but I find, the, yeah, the most different shows are being outside England so Scotland Wales Ireland are certainly different shows yeah. when you're when you go to somewhere like America or, or um, Canada or Australia New Zealand actually New Zealand probably have to change less than when you yeah, go to yeah. Wales but um well, well my my home city <coughs> is Carlisle but oh, yeah. I've been I've been I live and work in London I've been in London for the last 25 years and I saw yeah. I've seen you mainly in London, but I've seen you at Edinburgh as well. Have you yeah. ever played Carlisle, and would you ever think of doing it? I think I have. I, don't, I, I haven't think toured to Carlisle. Well. I think I was but I've done in... gigs there. Well, what's the place? Barrow. Barrow, Barrow in Furness. Furness. Yes. <laughs> well, I I opened there. This is absolutely true. I went to. I said, Baron Furness, I've looked you up. You're the most working class city, <laughs> city in the UK. 
<laughs> you are so my people. You Brilliant. are my people. And they just, they knew it. Yeah. So, they, so yes, they did laugh. I wish I'd been there. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was just hysterical going, oh, you wouldn't think I'd be a good booking. But it was fine. It was lovely. I actually, I actually find people think it's tough. You know, oh, you know, you, Hal, you'll do well in Guildford yeah, and you'll yeah, do yeah. bad in, in Liverpool. And actually, it's kind of rubbish. Yeah, people yeah. are certainly you know being the posh idiot and i tend to play up the posh idiot works better with an audience that isn't posh than than an audience that is posh often a surrey crowd will go you're sort of making fun of us aren't you by making fun of yourself being a middle class um, it's like the it's like the old ken dodd story where he's where he's he's describing what it's like to laugh and he's describing a, a freudian version of laughter and he goes into very elongated words and everything mm. and the punchline is that mind you ladies and gentlemen Fr freud didn't play glasgow empire on a friday night <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I've never forgotten that because it must be different going round from town to town. <laughs> it is, it is. But that's. Yeah. But also, you, you, you know what? You, it, what is also lovely about touring, and this sounds like a real up your ass sort of comment, but because we we live in this world of such division, and you t and we yeah. tend to make judgments about different parts of the country. And the north is like this, London's like that. All oh, these, you know, fishermen and oh, people make generalizations, and and the anger over things like Brexit and the Tories and Labour yeah, and yeah. The, all the all those things i think touring makes you love the country again you actually realize we've got i mean because even i've had trouble with some of my political stuff i would say i had trouble once in north wales right. uh oh there was one um beautiful gig but there was one woman was angry that i was making fun of trump or something and and Bre this is a, a couple of years ago yeah. trump and brexit and i was doing some stuff but 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 the acceptance because i'm not you know a lot of people don't come and see me expecting to see a lot of politics and they get more than they expect because they get about 10 15 minutes of me often ranting at something right. in an hour and a half yeah, i will yeah, put a bit yeah. in and i'm obviously a bit of a nasty lefty liberal remainer but the acceptance from people yeah, from dif alone. with different opinions <laughs> i love yeah no, but i I really love the fact that so many people go, I don't agree with what you said politically, but I found I really enjoyed the show and I went, You're my people. <laughs> I I love someone who, who can laugh at all our different opinions. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and yes, I can be excessive, but I like to expect that an audience goes, he is being he's sort of making fun of himself for being over the top. Um so I, I find it incredibly comforting to tour. It reminds yeah. you how much you like this country or how much I like this country when I think I hate it. I'm always going, oh, I'm moving to Ireland. I, we can, I, uh, you know. I, I totally agree with that because as a member of the audience, I like to travel around and see, you in, and see comedians in different cities and go yeah. to new venues and everything. I, I love that. And, and yeah. it's just the experience of going. Um, as I said before, I've seen you live many times either preparing or performing at the Edinburgh mm. Fringe. Uh, can you tell me what your first Edinburgh Festival was like? How daunting was, was it? Were you nervous? The um, thing is, I had different ones. I had ones where I went up for a day to do a new act competition, right. you know, late 90s. Yeah. And, and I also did a group show in 1999 right. which i hated actually it was in a group. No, i mean it was with lovely right. people like mitch, mitch ben mitch ben was doing it it was a group show but it it was just an unhappy time yeah. i wanted to be doing a full show so the most the best one was the first time i did my first hour which was like i left it till 2002 i'd been going about right. four and a half five years right. and i had a really good first edinburgh right. and uh and I went there because I'd been there three years before doing a group show and I hadn't really enjoyed it. I didn't expect to enjoy it. So yeah. I just was very focused, really hard working. I did about 65 gigs in a month or whatever because wow. I was doing, I was also doing a group show plus my own show. And, and you do um, other shows as well, don't you, for other people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you go around, you, yeah, you try and get as much, as much time as possible. Yeah. And I, re because I was just working hard, I really enjoyed it. I think Edinburgh gets tough for comics if you try and be too sociable. Don't yeah, just get yeah. caught up. Your mind gets turned going, oh, should I do that? Oh, should I be at that party? Oh, should I be doing this and that? And yeah, you actually, just, gotta... just put your head down and do it. Okay. The, the fact is, it's not the same experience, experience as visiting. I think to visit the Edinburgh Festival is fantastic. Yeah. To perform at, it's the audiences are seeing lots of other comedy. So it's the toughest crowds. Yeah. It's tougher than doing, going and doing a tour show. Yeah. Um, 
and you will have bad nights and you'll have reviewers who are 20 years old and students slagging you off and you yeah. go oh you don't know what you're talking about you yeah. know um so there'll there'll be bits of edinburgh that can turn your head but actually when you i never don't enjoy the fact of performing there yeah. and just perform as much I, as possible i i first went to the fringe in 2005 and oh, it's yeah. now my weekly holiday I, yeah. I I go up. I've been going for the, the last sixteen years till two thousand fourteen years till two thousand and nineteen, and in the week I see at least fifty shows. I Jeez. cannot get enough of it, and I need a holiday when I come back. My exactly. liver is battered. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. That's the thing. When there's no pressure, you don't yeah. do a show there. It's the wonderful place. Yeah. It's a wonderful place to be. But the thing is, it is. A, it's obviously hard because you're at a festival, yeah. and everybody's trying to get something out of it yeah, and i've yeah. had those great years like 20 2002 was a good year i got nominated for an, for the newcomer award and then 2012 was a massive year for me because i suddenly got more tv coming to see yeah. me do my hour show um but you have to sort of uh you have to switch off from that to really enjoy it because i because it brings yeah. out the you, I, with you can get jealous of people even though i feel closer to comics in Edinburgh than any other time because we're all going through a slightly traumatic experience you know we're all going through this thing of you also at the beginning <laughs> when it's a new show you're changing your show a fair bit to yeah. try and get it better um ready to tour it so it's 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 stressful as a comedian and it and you yeah you have to be very disciplined very disciplined yeah but uh but overall I've lo I love it it's I've brilliant. learned to love it again as yeah. my daughters have got older because my daughters will now oh, my, my wife hated the years of me being stressed by it so 2002 2003 because we had little kids yeah. and she'd come up for a few days or a week and find me too stressful she hardly ever comes now to it right <laughs> my daughters <laughs> who are 18 and 20 they come up they, they bring friends it. up that's and, fantastic and, and you see the festival again I've, they've been doing that since they were sort of 15 yeah. 16 and they've and you see the festival again through young eyes yeah you know course, i mean my yeah. wife she would she'll maybe come a night or two yeah. but she doesn't like the atmosphere there she finds it she finds it a bit too desperate i said it's not so desperate anymore now i'm now i'm more established it's not as desperate <laughs> <She's> got, she... <laughs> that's brilliant um one of your greatest strengths as a as, as a comedian for me is that i love your rants and and, and when you <laughs> rant you tend to get quite nervy with your <laughs> ranting. Do you suffer from nerves before you go on stage? Um, and if so, how do you cope with them? I do, but then I've always been terrible. I'm, I don't think I'm more nervous than other people. I unfortunately, I'm one of those very annoying people that's more vocal about my nerves. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I Sorry, am the comedian. That, nice. that, <laughs> yeah, I am the one at the comedy store that's running around the dressing room going, I'll probably be shit tonight. I'll be shit tonight. <laughs> um, I'm terrible. Uh, I mean, and everybody says that. That, I, that I, I've got that awful reputation of being the guy who goes, you know, I'm always joking, going, look, you're on before me. If you want to do some newer stuff and just mess about. And, just, and they go, of course I'm not going to do my newer stuff and be weaker just because you have to follow me. Um, I, uh, so I am very neurotic, but yeah. I also accept... The thing is, I've never walked away from a gig. I've never gone, and I've had, to, especially these corporate things where you're by yourself and you go to a business or you're in some big hotel or ballroom. For some reason, they're the scariest because yeah, you're yeah. sort of there. They're not there for a comedy night. They're there for a business do, yeah, and they've got yeah. comedy on. Yeah. So it's it's a scary event. And I do all this big fuss in my head, but I don't actually run away. And I don't go, oh, I'm having a breakdown. And, you know, and I never have done. I've never run away. I've always sort of done things. So I do get nervous, but I think I'm actually a prima donna who just voices it more to myself. I think that um, as well, you do need a certain amount of nerves before you do anything yeah. in public, really, if, you, if you're doing a presentation or whatever. And exactly. that's, of course, what comedians do. You know, you've got a, a, a crowd in front of you. And, um, and I think people often think that comedians are less frightened than ordinary people. And it's not that. It's that... It's that unfortunately the job we've chosen to do involves these nerves, yeah, and yeah. we have, and it's probably the only thing we can do, and we have to just have to deal with it to get to what we do. But also, it's that it's also that thing of I don't know. As I get older, I I always have some something fluttering away inside me, or or, or getting nervous about things. Um, but I but I do. I'm learning to enjoy them, which is weird. And also, the older you. <laughs> 
I, I'm learning to go. I quite enjoy the fact that it's so thrilling. I had to, I had to do one just during lock. Well, when lockdown was over, it was. It must be October, right? Where I was allowed to do a show. They put a festival on, and they said, "Can you do an hour and a half?" Oh, that's um, a lot. Yeah, like a yeah. tour show. But I haven't really got a tour show anymore because my tour finished a year ago. Yeah. Can you do an hour and a half to our audience that will all be sort of wearing masks and socially distance, but do two halves? And I said, oh God, but I can't do this bit from the tour show and I can't do that. And I've got to include loads of stuff about COVID. And and I almost, because I, I was so nervous about it, it was in my diary of me going, I just can't, haven't got done the gigs to, <laughs> to get gig fit enough to be good enough for this evening. Oh, but I also yeah. knew when I was when I was terrified before going on to do this thing, I thought, you, it is, you're going to enjoy this because the kick is going to be great when this goes okay. Yeah, and it yeah. went well and I was like, that's great. I can just produce an hour and a half and keep them interested. And and it's that it's that thing of, it, it sounds cocky, but you surprise yourself by going, yeah. and it is just experience. You surprise yourself by going, I can handle a hell of a lot now. And it's pathetic to say that after, you know, it's been 23 years since I first did a stand-up wow. gig. 24 years. That's incredible. 20, 24 years. And yet I'm still going, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> and yet I've got to see that. <laughs> you, were, you, were, you touched on what I want to talk about next. Um, can you describe um, your writing process and how you remember your routines? Do you Ooh. have a way of remembering them? I, I don't know. When I, I don't have a way of remembering them. Right. Um, because have like they... or anything that, that make you go along? Oh, I sort of yes. I, I know the sort of order I'm going in. That yeah. just gets quite that gets quite entrenched when I'm doing bits. I go, I'll put that bit in there and that bit. And when I'm doing normal gigs, um, if you're doing real new material sets and you're building a new show, right at the start, you've got a pad with you, right. so you go because yeah. it's because it's new. But um, so that's the different thing between a show and a normal gig because you have gigs where you're just doing your best stuff and yeah. you'll do stuff for many you know the last five six years. Um, I my writing process used to be so much more structured when I was new. Right. So there's 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 two different types of writing comedy. I think there's a I can't remember the name of the guy. The guy where you, you do columns of words and it's all to do with writing play, you know, jokes. I preferred this method called rant and rave, which is just just basically <laughs> like venting. You're venting everything I and you have that. taken you take an extreme <laughs> emotion and yeah. you just vent it and you literally just say it into a microphone and you write it all down. I, twenty years ago I would be saying doing that style. Now I tend to go, Oh, that's a good joke and I get one really good idea and it's the one that's gonna probably be the biggest line right. of the set. And then you just try and write around that idea. And I think I did it like the other night. I did I did a joke that's I've it's just an idea. It's not even a joke yet, but I want to build more on it. And it's on the fact of the fact that now, as I get older, I realise all I'm doing when I read self help books or spiritual books is is basically books that just tell me what I want to hear. So when you're young, they're all like feel the fear and do it anyway, get ahead with things, do the stuff. And now all the self-help books I read are like, hey, success isn't that important. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. Hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how happy you are in whatever you're doing and whether you've achieved all your dreams in life. Life's much more about just being present. And you go, I'm just hearing what I want to hear. <laughs> you know, I'm just getting older. You know, I'm just middle-aged and going, everybody who's middle-aged, whatever you've done in life has loads of, oh, have I achieved everything I want to achieve? Probably not. Oh, it's all, you know. Um, <laughs> And are there, just are there being... any specific themes you like to talk about? What do you like to mainly talk about on stage? Is it just like family life or...? Well, it ends up being loads of family things just because yeah. at the moment, especially with the family so much at the moment, yeah. um, and my wife's always a brilliant inspiration because she's very funny and she said, and it just sets me off. Yeah. Uh, and my kids, as they get older, are cha you know, because they've been little kids, so I've got all the little kids jokes I used to have, and now they're grown women, you know, 18 and 20. There's you all had those a, jokes. You had a um, great story about being in a cinema with them. <laughs> oh, yes, we were with Martha and people, yes. And that <laughs> was real. No, but all that's real. All that's real. Yeah, that's all the thing of when people think your daughter might be your girlfriend. Uh, yeah, it's that. Yes, it's um, that it, that's, good. yeah. And now they, my daughters have heard that they find that hilarious. And now they bring it up every single time we're out anywhere without my wife there. If I'm with one of them, they go, "Do you think, Daddy? Do you think you know?" And they try. So, um, so yeah, because but but all those things. It, it's it's that moment of you have like a bit of inspiration and go that's funny and the fun bit 
is creating the set around you know the bits around that and create and that's where the work really goes on usually the inspiration just happens I mean, yeah. the, the weird thing about stand-up is i mean i've really got to be writing more at the moment but i find the best ideas come to me when i go i'm not writing for three weeks i won't write try and write stand-up for a month or something yeah, yeah. i'll do something else i'll write a sitcom i'll do this I'll, i've got my podcast i've got things that i'm doing don't write stand-up and that's when you've got ideas on your phone the whole time because you just you have to go out and just live life yeah. oh, and have that. things happen. Yeah. And it's why lockdown has been hard for people with material. That's what they're, they're all saying, that, that people going, not a lot new is happening. Yeah. So you're not having that thing that happens that just sparks off an idea. That, yeah. and, and that's why we get, I've probably got too much angry politics stuff because we're all getting too involved in politics, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's it's exactly the same for me watching it um comedy mm. is my um uh way of dealing with the situation we're in with the pandemic if if i couldn't have online comedy or live comedy i don't know what i would have done but even i mm. can't go to a comedy night every night I, i'd be absolutely exhausted i've got most yeah. nights <laughs> <laughs> but not every night but but i i completely understand that you have to get away from it even yeah. though you love doing it or love watching it um, but, but but weirdly the best uh, the most satisfying jokes you ever write is when there's something that you really need to get out of your yeah. system <laughs> and it's uh, and it, it can be about yourself it can be about positive about something but those are the jokes where you go yes i finally found a way to make what makes me so angry funny or me so scared yeah, funny yeah. Or, and and that's why it i mean it's it's complete therapy it's such oh. it's when yeah. people go, oh, comedy therapy is very bad for you. It's about hiding emotions. It isn't necessarily. It's often about just expressing how we actually feel. And and because of the laughter, you're getting people going, yes, I know what you mean. And that's just, you know, you're it's just like wonderful. A, you're like a spokesman for everybody in the audience, um, of exactly. exactly how they're feeling. Yeah. Even, if the, even if they can't say it, you just, you, a comedian will just say it and and, yeah. and, and, and say it in a particular style that um makes it hilarious for the audience watching it's it's yeah. it, it's extraordinary to see um do you have any ambitions as a comedian do you have any anything you would like to achieve or are you happy as you are i know we're living in tough times at the moment but but in the in the normal world um do you want to um do you have any main big ambitions as a comedian to fulfill or they're not i've oh gotten again maybe this is age i have dreams that i yeah. don't necessarily expect to happen <laughs> but um i no i i would i i I don't have anything more than anything else. I would. The most important thing is to keep to keep on enough of a profile to still be touring yeah, yeah. as a comedian. To yeah. write a new show is always the next dream. Yeah. But in terms of other things, I would love, and I've I am writing now, and I might be completely the wrong age profile for this, um, but I have a, I have a very good idea for a sitcom that I've al already written an episode and a half of, basically. That's um, yeah, but I. I'm quite insecure. I've never written a sitcom by myself, and I'm just doing it now. I'm just going. Do you know what? I'm. I'm. I want to write this. My agent has seen what I've written so far. And my agent said, "Really like this. Keep going. I'm quite excited by by doing this." I'm going. Okay, but I just want to. It, for me, an absolute dream would be my sitcom. I've written it. I'm starring in it. It's the whole. It's the whole Ricky Gervais dream. You know. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But that would be. Uh, if I got that. I, I always say, oh, well, I said to someone, if I, uh, the other day I was saying this, if I ever got that, I can never moan again. You cannot let, let me moan because I will have achieved absolutely what I want. Now, I don't necessarily expect to get my own sitcom I happening. I hope you do, mate. If it does, uh, it, would it would be amazing. Be, I, yeah. I would be watching, definitely. Oh, I, I really rich. would. I think, I, I think it's a great idea. You'd be perfect for Would you be appearing in it or would you just be writing it? Or? I would be appearing in it yeah. because it, then it mixes up my two, you know, because I was yeah. an actor. I still am an actor. Yeah, I still yeah, occasionally yeah. do I've, I've acting seen things. I've in plays at the Edinburgh Fringe, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I've done a couple of plays there, yeah. but um, but you know, I, this is where I started, and I don't do much acting now. Right. And I must say, my first love is still stand up. But yeah. where, to have your own creation, I, I had it with a, I had a Radio Four sitcom that got you know did a couple of series of that that I wrote with Dominic Holland, and it was 
so amazing to get something that's your creation together yeah. and you get all these actors in you get you know really good people like yeah. ronnie and kona and um, yeah and and uh it was just yeah so so to be, if i ever got that off the ground with a tv thing it would be fantastic yeah. but i would be doing it from a weird demographic because usually they don't give people over 50 their first sitcom but i i have to think we get funnier as we get oh, older tell me about <laughs> it. i think i do and i'm over 50. <laughs> <laughs> um we are all living in strange times it's a very mm. weird time to be living um have you found how have you found online gigs as opposed to live gigs i i do do you know what in a weird way they are they're less intense than a live gig yeah. you never feel you can storm in quite the same way as you can live and you can't die in quite the same way as you <laughs> can live off with a button <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's it does take away the fear element yeah. of being right there having to face yeah. people when things go you know yeah. but um i just think it's it's just it's fine and i've really yeah. enjoyed doing i really do enjoy doing loads of them actually i enjoyed that one that you know you saw the other night and yeah, I, I did lots of them over christmas yeah. with yeah. christmas parties and things and i really enjoyed them i love the fact that you can go to people in their different boxes and make yeah. fun of their house and you know all that sort of stuff and what's going on and suddenly their dog walks past yeah. and then the kid jumps over there. <laughs> yes that's lovely you know the, the, it it is lovely to have that but and it's been you know when when you have had a break and you haven't done live stand-up for a while and this happened in the summer i hadn't done a i'd done car park gigs where ask, people were sitting yeah. in their cars yeah. leaning out the window and that was okay yeah. and i did online gigs and then i did an outdoor gig that usually you would go this is tough it was outdoor with people sitting on the ground this was in july it was in north london people sitting on the ground um and watching you and honestly all the comics on the bill hadn't done a live gig to an audience sitting there wow for since march you know this was in after the first lockdown and it was quite emotional you did suddenly go wow. this is amazing because you're directly you're down here yeah. talking to this guy and that guy and, that, and they're right there and it's it's just much more immediate and the, the that you really felt the laugh sweep over you in a way that you don't in the same way yeah. online you do sort of online but you know some people are muted some people are, are listening and it's i mean it, it, when it comes back i think there'll be tears again when it comes oh, back believe again me. i mean um, i me. i totally agree with you it's it's so great to have this medium but you, for me you can't be live because you never know what's going to happen exactly. And, exactly and the atmosphere and all the rest of it um who are your favorite comedians past and present do you have any or i know it's that's a his, massive that question is, it's so hard that question <laughs> <laughs> it really is i have um the reason the reason I ask it is because the reason why I write the blog is because of Morecambe and Wise, and I know they're universally oh, loved, yeah. but they're one of the few acts that I didn't get to see. I've met, I met Eric Morecambe's wife, and I've read everything about them and all the rest yeah. of it. But um, I did get to see Les Dawson. I saw Tommy Cooper, Ken Dodd, Rick Mail. And these oh. Peter Kay, Frank Skinner in the eighties, and, yeah. and so there are so many very good memories for me. But I just wondered if there was any specific comics that that that, that come to mind with you. Well, as I said, I, Eddie Izzard sort of inspired yeah, me yeah. at the beginning, uh, and still, you know, I still think brilliant comic. Um, I would say, when he was on the circuit and I haven't seen him it's he let, you just don't see that much comedy because I mean yeah. when you're usually well I should be trying to watch more I've I've, I've just realized that I was watching more stand-up during the first lockdown and I should be watching more again now because <laughs> you don't tend to watch basically because you're going oh god maybe it'll affect me and maybe a joke will seep in yeah. and I'll just <laughs> it. Um, so you you worry about that but I I did watch was you don't watch re I mean sorry was I, I was saying I haven't seen him for ages but um was on the circuit lee mack oh, is an fantastic. amazing star. well lee fantastic. mack to me lee mack is a modern um eric morcom yeah 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 in terms yeah. of he is he is so good he's yeah. just funny 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 man i and saw very, him you know, at uh, the banana cabaret the bedford arms and yeah. he headlined that and then i saw him at the hammersmith apollo it was it was hit the road mac and i, oh, met, yeah. I, I was crying at him because and, he, and he that's worked, going he, some for me <laughs> yeah well, i i really i think 
I think as a comic, I really appreciate those comedians yeah. that whatever they're saying, yeah. they guarantee there's jokes in there. Yeah. And, they, and, and there's, there's a real temptation amongst some comics, and it's not many, to get indulgent. Yeah. To get to, and just, so I tell you one who I thought, think is fantastic yeah. for not doing this, and who I watched recently was Jim Jeffries. Oh, he's brilliant. He's uh, absolutely Jim, brilliant. He just yeah, I did, uh, on and... I knew, I knew him quite, you know, quite well on the circuit. Yeah. I knew him years ago. I haven't seen him for about seven years. He's been around for a while, yeah. No, he's, he's sort of big, in, he's so big in America yeah. now. But he walks out to what I find really annoying, particularly about American audiences, but it happens here as well. He walks out to that, woo, woo, oh, gosh. woo, yeah, because he's cool, because he's, do, do, do you know those sort of, you know those sort yeah, of people? really annoying. Those people who, who they, but they whoop as a sort of way of going, whoa, I love Jim, because I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm the cool guy, look at me, woo, I'm wooing, and I know his stuff, I've got all, I've seen all of them, I've seen all the shows, you know, those kind of audience members that, I mean, we do it a bit here with Stuart Lee and stuff, like, yeah, Stuart yeah, Lee, yeah, Stuart yeah. Lee fan, you go, oh, fuck, you, you, Stuart Lee is brilliant but you are using Stuart Lee to be more interesting when you don't have enough about yourself to be interested in this <laughs> that's, what, that's what I think I, you know I'm, I'm actually Stuart I've got to say Stuart Lee I'm, I'm, I do say that while he saying is, it's one of my amazing. favorite comics but I hate Stuart Lee wankers I hate people who are <laughs> you know, Stuart Lee's amazing because they like him because you know, it's, it just shows that I'm really bright and clever. They go piss off because there's, you know, I love, uh, you know, I I think every comic, the people who people were snooty about, like Lee Evans. Lee Evans was a great. Oh, he was fantastic. Comic. He was, you know, and it's. I hope he still the does some stuff. Visual gags and, that he did. The visual end exactly. of the joke was inspired the funny face and everything exactly and yeah people were a bit snooty because he was a bit that cartoon but i think no, i love the people that work so hard at the jokes and i note with jim jeffries he's got all that love and yeah. he's got all that passion and he makes points and he's rude and he's aggressive and he's got that tough image but he never forgets the funny no. he never forgets to be funny yeah. and i was watching him going you deserve everything, Jim, because you play up the, hey, I don't give a shit. No, I'm, don't, I'm kind of drunk all the time. Anyway, he's, I don't think he does drink anymore. I'm not sure if he does anymore. Um, but I just remember watching him last summer and go, oh, you're still so good. Yeah, you're still yeah, so, yeah. And you've not got too sucked into the, hey, listen to me, I'm a prophet very, thing. Very it's, much so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, like me, do you go to um, comedy as a member of the audience a lot? <laughs> Hardly ever. Every comedian in Edinburgh? I've interviewed so far said no. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. In Edinburgh, I'll see a few shows. I'll try and see other stuff. I, they won't admit why, and I. It's because we're jealous of them. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they go yo well no it's good enough no you're jealous um I, you know i occasionally uh i will see things i'm always trying to see more it's quite hard to what i i think it's less fun when you yeah. do stand up watching other stand-ups because you also can see how things are done you do know you can sort of work it out a little bit not with everybody but you just you're, you're watching it with a different head on. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, you, you, yeah. You, first of all, you're never sucked into the, hey, he's just making it up as he goes along stuff, you yeah. know, which some people are, apart from if it's like Ross Noble or someone. But, yeah. um, but you just, I, 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 I don't know. I, I do, I'm trying to. I'm really forcing myself to as a comic to watch more. And I think part of it is, you know, watching Jim Jeffries and go, I want to be in the yeah. massive theatre, even yeah. though I love the arts centres I do, yeah. as long as I have a big theatre. But, um, uh, so I think there's, I think there's a thing of competition as well. Right. But, but I do, I, I forget how much it, in, it does inspire me watching other people. Yeah. It does make me go, shit, that's brave. Yeah. I love seeing comics. I go, God, you're brave to say that. Yeah. yeah. And still, when they still surprise me, Jim yeah. Jeffries will do that. You know, they'll just be so honest about something. You're sitting there um, thinking, has he really said that? And then, yeah. Thinking, but thank God he said it, as you said. Exactly. Said, you know, yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I've got a, I have got braver the longer I've gone, but I'm not that brave. Oh, yeah. I don't oh, yeah. It's good to see that. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, yeah. But I, you know, that really is my thing of going, because that's when the great comics are the people that will really just um not give a damn you know mm. so i love that I, I love people who don't give a damn what people think and really do just you know just take that risk of yeah. saying the the unstable but also i love the people that work hard and always give you a joke it's like i i find it moving actually that i know lee mack is not going to take a tour show out and not be really funny yeah. and yeah, jim yeah. jeffries is always going to have a punchline at the end and the same way morgan and wise were 
you know, you want to make your points, but the main thing is you want to, you've got to give them a, a present. You've got to give them the laugh yeah. every time, you know. That's, and, a, uh, that's so, that's such a, such a good answer because uh, whenever I look at them, I always think there's an extra layer to them. So with Eric Morecambe, it was the glasses or Tommy yes. Cooper was the fez or the magic or, um, and, and to do that without doing anything and getting an audience laughing is just genius. It yeah. really is, and, and, and that's what lives on in the memory. Um, exactly. I miss going to, I, I saw you at um, Headliners, and I saw you at the Soho Theatre, and I miss going to venues like this because um, uh, the, 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 the diverse range of acts and everything that they get yeah. there. And um, uh, just, to, just to finish off um, uh, the uh, interview, is there anything else you would like to mention? Is, uh, you say you were writing a, a sitcom, um, uh, are you writing any books? Are you, have you got any podcasts? Is I do, I, I do a podcast. Uh, Rich, you remind me, the way, your attitude to comedy is my attitude to rugby, by the way. <laughs> I'm a bit, as you know, I'm actually wearing the Saracens rugby shirt, know, yeah. which is a very, very unpopular rugby club. But I have a rugby podcast yeah. that I do with uh, with Dan Skinner, who is you know, Angelos oh, uh, Pithamu. Yeah. So um, he does that character, but but he does it as himself, and it's us talking rugby for about forty five minutes a week. We usually have a guest on. We've had some big rugby names so far. David Soul was. Wow. If you're not a rugby fan, you won't know. But he's Scotland, he was Scotland captain in 1990, marched the team out to beat England. And Lewis Moody, who was played for England and captained England yeah. in the 2011 World Cup, it was. But he was on the field for the 2003 World Cup. So we get good guests on. Um, and it's called Rugby Jubbly. And, right. I, and it's, it's mainly fans. To, it's mainly us as fans talking about rugby. And it's making us even more obsessive i thought i was quite obsessed by saracens rugby i'm becoming obsessed by everybody i know so much about rugby at the moment um because i have to prepare for this podcast yeah and even though even though games are off we're now <laughs> dan laughs me because i'm a bit over the top compared to him but we now we're now doing analysis of old games so at the moment i'm, I'm literally downstairs downstairs i've got youtube up on my big tv yeah. to watch um australia new zealand 2000 which apparently was wow. the best game of the of this century wow, <laughs> and we're brilliant. doing another so so it's sort of if you are a rugby fan please have a listen because it is us yeah. sort of from uh, from quite an idiotic perspective making silly comments about rugby and pontificating on we're deciding which team is winning you know <laughs> i'm i'm oh, always well, making I'll, outrageous I'll comments out. Yes. No, um, I mean, if you if you know anything about rugby, I have the most ridiculous theories that, like, we don't need defence coaches in rugby and Eddie Jones should have resigned two years ago. And there's <laughs> it's all, like, I make ridiculous comments. Anyway. Are you um, writing any shows, any new material? Or? Yeah, well, I've already got shows shows booking in for early 2022. Wow, good man. So my, no. my agent is booking my next tour. They were hoping, I mean, they, they keep going, have you got a title, have you got a title? And now they've gone quiet, which means I think Edinburgh is definitely not happening. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think so. I don't year. think it is, because yeah. they usually go, we need a title, need a theme. So I'm I'm formulating my next show, but I I that is also the happiest times in, in when you're making your next show it is so wonderful because you have bits you go you start off going can i do an hour oh god what have i got you know a bit, um I, you know and and the themes you want in it and when you see it coming together and write and it makes you write it's yeah, the most yeah. exciting thing so and i know you enjoy watching comedy or anything but when you get a great joke I mean, I say it's great to perform on stage. The other great moment is that moment you're sitting right and you go, that's it, that's yeah. the joke. And you just take the rest of the day it's off. It's like a light bulb and, going off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is. It's the most exciting thing. And it is, you know, have a watch. I've moaned, I've moaned so much in life, uh, but I keep having these moments of going, I'm so, it's, it's so wonderful to do this yeah. as a job. Because yeah. <laughs> it really isn't. Well, the amount <laughs> of um, joy and... Uh, humor you give off is extraordinary you know and 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 i was i was chatting um the other night to another comedian and and uh, um 
he said oh, I did a gig for like 20 people or something and I said even that you've you've made joy for those 20 people and that yeah. is something wonderful you know it's 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 fantastic I really do um wish you every success and I'm delight as I say I'm delighted that you've been my guest today I've so, so much enjoyed talking to you oh shit. it's been such a pleasure rich i love talking about myself so. <laughs>